Welcome to the You Decide podcast. I'm Dr. Tiffany. We are going to bring you stories of ordinary people who have chosen to live an extraordinary life outside of their comfort zones and into confidence, possibility, and certainty. You are just one decision away from living your most aligned life because let's get real. That's what we all want. Hey guys, today we have Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Han. Hi, Kel. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of um, what I know about you, how we met, your journey up until the present moment, and then we're going to kind of dive into specifics of, I don't know, being a mom, being a multiple business owner, taking risks, doing mm -hmm. all the things that you uh, see behind that camera lens. Okay? Perfect. Okay. So I met Kelly through chiropractic, which is super amazing how many years ago that was, 12, 13, that's what we're kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, she was the office manager for one of my colleagues. And so we were in all these events together. She was a rock star CA manager. I remember telling Lindy like, God, can we just find another Kelly? <laughs> she did that work like massive chiropractic advocate. I would say, Kel, you are um, more than a chiropractic advocate than most chiropractors are. So my oh, heart, thank you. my heart goes out to you massively because, um, you were shouting from the mountaintop on, um, potential for people and that we just don't see that very often anymore is people actually talking about chiropractic in a way that makes their life better because it changed your life. Right. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah. Um, so through that, you were office manager at that space for five years. Then you opened your own daycare. Well, you got married, opened your own daycare and a year ago you got into photography. Was it? Yeah. A year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. So if you know Kelly, she's a, um, she's a driver, <laughs> right? <laughs> just a little, just a just, little. Just a little. <laughs> You know, like us, us driver women struggle to maybe find the yin to the yang every now and then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So I want you to just talk a little bit about like in the 12 years that I've known you, you have, you have two big kids and two little kids. So two different families kind of, and you've transitioned yeah. in and out of all the things that that brings. Mm -hmm. What was the driving force to take the risks that you took? Mostly just wanting to be in control of my own life and my own destiny and building something of my own. I've always, you know, through many, many years of working for various companies, I've always helped everyone else build their dreams and their wealth, but I never got to, you know, be brought along with that so much, you know, I mean, it's, it's different when you're doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you start something on your own, you know, from scratch, I mean, and obviously, you, you know, you need your support people to help you get there. And that's, you know, awesome. But to be that person on the top, finally, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, you know, to be my own boss and, you know, kind of drive my my own car into you know my future um it was just priceless and um and especially since the dynamic after i got married you know everything changed i couldn't travel as much as i had before um it just i couldn't be in it a hundred percent and i'm i'm one of those people that i'm either in a hundred percent or i'm not i have a hard time just doing things halfway um it's either i'm in or i'm not so it um, it wasn't too long after I got married before. It was pretty clear that I just needed to um, kind of, you know, chase after my own dreams. I mean, and it was time anyway. I mean, I was 40, oh God, what, I don't know, 38 when I got married, I think. <laughs> I think, yeah. I don't even know. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, and I'd always worked for somebody else and, and I was ready. I mean, I knew I could do it. I'd helped many other businesses, you know, build um, from the ground up and, um, yeah, so it was something I always wanted to do for myself. So it was finally that chance. It was that um, kind of that kick in the pants was like, okay, this is my time. Like, I'm going to do this. My husband actually quit his job too and went back to school. And I quit mine and started my daycare from scratch. I'm not knowing 
um, how that was going to go, but I just, I knew I could do it. And it's something I had always dreamt about, but I just never had a home of my own. I always lived in apartments or a condo and just didn't have the space. And, um, and we knew we wanted to have more children. So, um, it was perfect for me to stay home this time and not have to work, you know, 15 jobs to support, you know, my, um, my oldest daughter at the time when I was a single parent, but, um, so yeah, it was just, um, it was time and I was driven and I knew I could do it. And just right off the bat, I mean, I was successful and I had a niche with being more natural and organic, which set me apart from so many other places, obviously in yeah. town is just to offer something different. And that's the key is that you, you know, you can't do what everybody else is doing. If you want to be successful, you have to separate yourself from the pack. So, oh, I love that. So what would you tell the women listening that get stuck in the trap of, oh, I'm really busy and I have a decent job. Um, I'm 38 or I'm 40 or I'm 50 or I'm in an apartment or I don't have any money or all the bullshit things we tell ourselves that we can't do, right? right. What would you tell that woman that the risk to stay the same is greater than the risk to change, right? Mm -hmm. How, what would you say to the person that has a longing in their heart that they want to do something more for themselves? You guys, here's the thing is life is short and especially looking at what we're going through today, you need to just stop making excuses. If it's something you want to do, just go freaking do it. Stop <laughs> making excuses. Stop letting other people tell you you can't do it. Get that, that voice out of your head and just get it done. Take that first step and or quit your job i don't care because you know what you're gonna work a lot harder if you don't have a job that's <laughs> like you know fall back on you're not gonna have a choice it's gonna put you out there i mean one of my studio mates um you know she took a chance and she um with my photography business that i have also on top of my daycare um we you know i messaged her and i'm like i really want you in on the studio with me i think you'd be a great fit I think you're phenomenal. You're an amazing talent. And, you know, it was exactly what she needed to really put herself out there and make her work even harder because now she has studio rent, you know? Right. right. Um, so it's just, you have to give yourself that kick in the pants and, and the okay to do it. Like, right. who's even going to tell you no, you know, I mean, your husband, well, tell him off. <laughs> tell him uh -huh. Go jump off a bridge like he's there to support you, you know, or, or your sister or your mom who keep telling you that, oh, you'll never be able to do that. You know, you need to tell them to just shut up and just, you know, believe in yourself and believe what your heart is telling you. Because if it's something that you truly believe in, you'll get there. Don't, don't, you know, don't distrust that for a second. You'll get there without a doubt. So you raised Drew on your own. When did you have her? How old were you? Um, I was, um, I had Drew when I was 21 and, okay. um, yep. And so, I mean, you know, I heard she would, you know, we had split custody with her dad. Yep. And, yeah. Okay. So going into that, I was just, um, I was doing a video earlier today and I talked about that lesson of everything happens for us and not to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Were there moments that you're like hot diggity, I am sick of being, the victim of the situation or mm -hmm. things not working or like do you remember a turning point that you're like you know what i am my own voice i am going to stick up for myself i am going to listen to my heart and i'm going to go do that or was it just tiny accumulations as you grew up per se yeah you know it's just definitely you know, getting more mature and older, more experienced that kind of helps build that confidence too, to where, you know, I mean, maybe 10 years before I started my daycare, maybe I would have, wouldn't have been confident enough to do it. I don't know. But, right. you know, you learn so much, you know, you, I mean, you go to school, you go to college, you learn all your things. You know, I learned a lot through chiropractic and the business um, groups that um, my doctor was part of and that you were part of, which mm -hmm. was, you know, wonderful information. And, and, you know, just cumulative. So all of those things. And then just finally the point of like, you know, I deserve this, you know, so it's just making that decision, you mm -hmm. know, so true. Yourself. Yep. Okay. I'm really excited to talk about the photography stuff because I feel, um, I, you, 
your impact to see people different than what they see themselves is immeasurable. I want you to know that. Oh, thank you. Yep. Woo! Get a little teary. <laughs> Tell me about it. I get it again. <laughs> and so that's what really, like, obviously everybody has an amazing story to get to the point of. But the I don't even know how to say it. Boudoir. Is that how you say it? Yeah, however you want to say it. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Boudoir. Yeah. Boudoir. Some French word that shouldn't have an R is all I know. Yeah. <laughs> so can you explain first what that is? Then I want to talk because of the intimate style that it is. I really want to talk and get into the heart of a woman, of the mm -hmm. confidence, self-esteem, the worthiness that you see that person transform from your lens. But mm -hmm. first, let's just talk about like, what is this? What is it? Yeah, so boudoir photography is just another genre of um, photography where, you know, it's kind of a natural progression. I know a lot of people that start with family sessions and then um, you kind of graduate more into some of these different genres. And um, um, I finally dove into the boudoir um, last, well, actually in January. So it wasn't really even that long ago, um, but, I finally decided that, you know, why can't I do this? Um, I'd never done it before, but, you know, I decided, okay, well, instead of just shooting one person at a time, I'm just going to do this big marathon. So I had never shot boudoir before. I'd shot families and animals and, you know, food and just all, all kinds of other stuff. But um, I kind of don't do things the traditional way. <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> you know, like you said, I just dive in. I said, this, I want to do this, so I do it. And um, I, I booked seven ladies. Um, so I was fully booked for my first um, marathon with, with zero portfolio in boudoir. And um, that first marathon though, I'll tell you what, that's, exact, that's when I knew for sure that this was the genre of photography I needed to be um, specializing in um, or at least have you know, a huge part of my business into because um, just getting to see those ladies in, in the more intimate, um, and that, and that's the boudoir. And I, I, I digressed a little bit, I get a little excited, but, um, but with the boudoir, you know, you can be in, you know, nothing you can be, you know, it just, just your own skin. You can wear lingerie um, you know, maybe it's just a sexy outfit. It's really whatever. It's basically mostly just you coming out of your comfort zone basically is boudoir, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so whether you're just, you know, in sheets, you know, wrapped up in some sheets and, and, you know, you get to have your hair and your makeup done and you get to feel like a queen for the day and get, you know, primped and pramp, you know, pampered. And um, you have ladies, you know, fussing and clucking all over you. And then you get me who is just like yelling at you about how amazing you look and how you just like getting to see like, how these women just like go from so shy in the beginning because I mean, it's a nerve wracking thing um, because you're, you know, sometimes you're half naked in front of somebody or maybe you're naked <laughs> in front of me and, um, and to not be nervous, you know, it takes a lot <laughs> obviously, but you know, I help, I give you some mimosas to help you with that. <laughs> Everybody needs, you know, have a little drink to get, get the edge off a little bit, but, um, you know, but to see that transformation in that first marathon to get back to that was just, um, it was like singing from the heavens, like the, the heavens, you know, opened up and the angels sang to me. <laughs> you know? I mean, it was just something I knew that this is what I was supposed to be doing because like I was in tears most of the time, just like watching these women go from, you know, just like so unsure of themselves to like just blossoming in front of me and showing this energy and this confidence. And, and we were working together to get there. Like it wasn't just me. It wasn't just them. It was both of us becoming one. And it sounds probably really corny, but, but it just, it, it is what it is. And it was just, it's magical. Like for women to trust me with themselves in such a vulnerable, um, you know, place, it's just, it's something I would never take for granted. And it's just such an honor and to be part of that transformation and watch them just like, 
bloom in front of me. And then when, you know, when I deliver their images and they, they message me telling me that they're crying and they're just so happy, like they'd never seen themselves like that before. And Aww. it's just, it's just, it's a dream come true. Like I, I knew it, it, boudoir is always something that's, that's interested me, interested me for many, many years, but, um, but it was just something I wasn't sure I wanted to do, but it's, it was definitely, you know, my mind was made up after that first session, that first marathon that I ran, that this is definitely what I should be doing. So, yeah. Yeah. I One love it. thing that you, and I don't even know when you said it, if you, it was when you were taking a picture of me or I don't, I don't remember, but no, it wasn't. It was, I think in a conversation, you said, I wish they could see what I see behind the lens. Do you remember this? Do you remember? I don't even know when, when this conversation happened. Yeah. yeah. What would it look like if every woman could see <laughs> what you see? Well, they get to see what I see once they get their pictures, which is awesome. You but know? you see the, you see the caterpillar to the butterfly. Yeah. Right? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Like how, how does a woman take that and start to own that for themselves? They start to own it pretty quickly. Um, I get so many comments about even just bef before the session's done, like just they're amazed at how comfortable I've made them feel and how just inspired they feel um, before they've even really seen any pictures. So it's it's this journey that we're going along together and and I'm telling them, you know, okay, do this, do that. Um, you know, I'm joking with them, doing all these things and you can you can see them transform and I can, yeah, I can see their, their potential. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, as soon as they walk in the door, you know, and then it's just the added bonus to have the hair and makeup done and then I'm telling you how to pose or, or just the direction, the coaching that I'm giving you. Um, so it's just, yeah, I mean, it's just this journey that we're on together really. And, and they, they, they feel it, they see it mm -hmm. as we're going along through the session. Um, and, and I mean, before they leave, I mean, one of, one of my favorite clients, she's so cute, she lost a hundred pounds. And so she did that session as a gift to herself. Mm -hmm. Um, and when she left, she did this cute little TikTok thing, which like, I don't have TikTok. It's like, so out of my, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Either. It's crazy. Like I, I know, but she's, she posted a cute little TikTok thing on my business page about how amazing she felt. Like she was singing to what this, whatever song. And it was just amazing. Um, Aww. like she was just like, I am a queen and Kelly's the bomb. <laughs> like, I, I just, I can't believe I feel like this. You know, like, and she hadn't even seen any pictures yet. I mean, it was just amazing. So it was, it was just magical and it just made me cry and just everything. It's just amazing. There's just yeah. nothing like it. I love shooting families and all that, but like to that inspiration that, and just being able to see a woman um, and even a man, cause I've, I've shot men too, just to come out of their shell because, you know, men deserve it too. I mean, they're, you right. know, they have, rough things that they experience in their lives and right. and there's a lot of photographers in town that won't shoot men and yeah. i think that's really sad because they deserve it too you know yeah. i mean they have so many hang-ups they have just as many hang-ups as we do and so it's just it's awesome to see you know them or even as a couple i had i shot a couple with a, a more intimate setting and um the the husband messaged me later and he's like thank you so much kelly for putting on this event um, you know, I, you know, it allowed my wife and I to, to kind of reconnect more so than we, we have in quite a while. They have three kids at home. So they're just busy running ragged from right. chasing after their kids, you know, and they don't have time to, you know, be intimate and just really take time for themselves. So this was like a whole, they made it into a date and it was just so awesome. And they just were able to reconnect. And that was just a beautiful thing. You know, yeah. I mean, if it can help, you know, help your marriage, help spice it up, you know, help you know, in any capacity, I mean, there's, you can't go wrong with that, you know? Right. Right. What's your favorite part about normal photography? I say normal, whatever, <laughs> traditional yeah. families, like being able to get snapshots of who they are in their life. Yeah. Um, just being the, being able to use the, the creative side of my brain. Um, 
-hmm. I don't get to use that a whole lot. And I have just so many ideas and fun things that I, I want to do and incorporate into my images. But, you know, but truly finding out who a family is and then being able to capture that for them and document that for, you know, for years to come, just kind of freeze those little moments in time. It's, it's just awesome. Like for my Mother's Day sessions, um, I like to help create memories. You're not just there to take pictures, but we're actually creating memories too. And so for my motherhood sessions, I bought um, all the moms a little aloe plant. And then I had um, part of the session was that the kids got to help water the plant and then they gave it, they got to give it to mom. And that was creating memories, you know? I mean, it's not just, okay, smile at the picture, you know, at the camera. It's not, that's not all it is to me. It's, you know, and then I have, you know, a special, usually for my mini sessions, whether it's Christmas or motherhood story sessions, I have little books that they'll sit on a couch and read together. So they read a story while we're there and I'm taking pictures of that because whoever gets pictures of something like that, just something that you do every day, you know, you don't have that usually. And especially with a mom, you know, usually the moms are taking the pictures and they're never, you know, very right. rarely in the picture. So, um, so it's just, it's helping create those memories um, and being able to use that creative side of me that just makes me so excited about photography in general. Okay, what's your biggest challenge in all of this, in juggling life, kids, being a wife, two businesses? Yeah, um, balance, you know, I think it's just a made up thing. <laughs> no kidding, right? I mean, people talk about balance all the time and, you know, I wish that I could figure it out, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I ever will, maybe, but, um, <laughs> I just try to do the best that I can, you know, and, but it, I mean, it's easier for me because I'm with my kids during the day and then at night and then on the weekends I'm editing and, or running off to do a shoot. And right. so, I mean, I do get that time with them during the day. Obviously things will change a little bit when um, my youngest daughter goes to kindergarten in the fall, but um, you know, it's, you know, everybody is always striving for balance and, you know, and, I guess that's the big thing. That's my big challenge is, you know, trying, I, I'm a big people pleaser. So I want to make everybody happy. I want, you know, I want everything, <laughs> you know, I want to be successful. I want to, you know, have a great life for my family. I want to, you know, be able to do all these things with them. But it, but right now I feel like it's, it's a lot of focus on the work right now, but you know, there is a silver lining, like eventually you get to that point where you can breathe a little bit, but right now it's just kind of the hustle part, you know? So it's, uh -huh. it's, so the balance is really, really hard right now because I'm just always working. I never really have any time off. <laughs> so you don't, right now. I don't, I really don't. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, I mean, if I'm not doing daycare, I'm editing and I, or I'm running out the door to do a shoot. So I just, I don't really have downtime so and is that okay um it's okay right now because like i said like this isn't forever <laughs> you know yeah yeah right. hope not <laughs> you know but um you know it's just you know you you get to the point and I, now i'm getting to that point too where you know i can you know as a business person i can raise my prices a little bit so i don't have to be so busy but i but i really don't want to let go of the photography creativity part because it just is so fulfilling to me and I don't right. want to let go of my daycare because I love my families love my kids I mean I I don't know <laughs> how I could ever give that up but um but yeah so it's just it's just kind of crazy right now but you know it's just kind of part of the deal right now but I'll get there and I'll figure it out eventually obviously it just takes some time but Okay, so when you took these risks to start a daycare and then start photography, um, what I hear a ton from people not wanting to take that risk is what you just said, is the fear of it being too much and not having time for your family. So when you were making these decisions, did you just say, this is what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go here and everything will work out as long as I have support with Tommy. And yeah, that is that what you did? Yeah, I mean, mostly like I didn't expect to be as busy as I was, um, even when I just first started out, like I had no idea how it was. I mean, it just went crazy <laughs> right away. Um, 
which I'm very fortunate because I know that's not always the case when you um, start something new. But, um, but yeah, I um, just, I mean, I launched my business and it just took off. I mean, I worked my butt off though. Like I didn't just sit around and make excuses. Like I, I made things happen. I did a lot of, you know, free sessions to build my portfolio and, you know, and, and some experts will tell you, don't, you know, you can't just, you know, you got to focus on certain things to shoot and you, you know, you can't give away everything for free and all these things, but you know, everything works, you know, things work differently for different people, obviously. But, um, but I feel like I am as successful as I am now and I'm as good as I am now is because I sh I've shot almost everything. I mean, I've, I've done it all in a short year and a half. I've done everything from weddings to um, family reunions to um, ben you know, benefits to animal photography to families to boudoir. I mean, there's really not much I haven't photographed, <laughs> you know. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm just constantly building my skills, which is awesome, you know, and I don't think there's a downside to that versus just sticking to like one type of shooting or one type of just thing in general, you know, that's going to limit you, you know, I just don't see the sense in that. So, but yeah, so on, on a business note, we're going to wrap up shortly. Yeah. Cause you've talked about business a lot and I love business. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> For people who are um, maybe looking to take a leap, take a risk, start their own business. What is a, like your top business tip? I didn't even allow you to prepare for this. <laughs> you can't have any fear. That's for sure. No fear and no excuses. Those are the two big things. Um, and just, and get to work. You know, I mean, I, I know of so many people, um, especially in the photography business that always talk about how, how saturated the market is and that, well, how can I sell a session when everyone else is doing them for $50 and all of these things. And it's like, just, it doesn't matter. Like they're not your ideal client. Yeah. which you know is something that you know especially in chiropractic you have your ideal clients who's your ideal client that's who you want to cater to who cares about all the other people because we all have different ideal clients we're not all chasing after the same people it may seem like we are but we're not right um so it's just you know just quit making excuses like who cares i mean there's like 250 some photographers in town right. just in fargo moorhead and i'm not i don't let that be you know, an excuse for me. I just market myself. I try to make myself look different so that I can be, you know, set apart a little bit and people notice me, um, you know, and be part of the community and um, do things for the community. Um, I've, I'm involved in a lot of different things that obviously I can't really post about because, you know, you can't post everything when you're yep. <laughs> working with certain organizations, obviously, but, um, you know, but it's, you know, it's just, you know, no fear and no excuses. Just, you know, just be done. Yeah. You just got to get those voices out of your head. Like I said before, um, yeah. whoever's giving you that negative energy and that negative feedback, you need to remove them from your lives or at least put them on mute and just go full steam ahead. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Well, I think, I don't know. What do you love most about chiropractic? <laughs> chiropractic. The, bo the, bo <laughs> the power that made the body heals the body. People just need to understand that. And that um, we, need, we need to put more trust in our body um, and with the fevers and the sicknesses. I mean, you know, you hear about the vaccines and all of this, but like, why can't we talk about fresh air and exercise and supplements and doing all these things that we know keep us healthy, getting adjusted? <laughs> That's right. the, those are the things that we need to be doing. We don't need to worry about you know, the next vaccine that's only going to be 20% effective, like the flu shot, you right. know, if it's, if it's even 20%, um, you know, like let's, you know, get ourselves in a pot, in a positive mindset so that we're healthy body, mind, and soul, you know, I mean, it's just, yep. it just makes so much sense to me. Chiropractic is just this magical thing. And it's just this secret weapon that people don't know about. It's just, yep. You know, when you find a good provider, a good chiropractor like you, Dr. Tiff, who's fantastic, and you have staff that help educate your clients and um, your members, then, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world because you go from just getting, 
you know, oh, I'm going to, you know, see my chiropractor because my neck hurts to living optimally. You get to live your life at an optimal level that you would never reach before because your body can't get there if you have all this interference. I mean, whether it's, you know, the food you're eating, the relationships that you have, um, you know, exercising, not exercising, all of these things that are, you know, kind of bringing you down. I mean, you, you need, you just need it in your life. I mean, there's just no way around it. Awesome. So your best life, you need it. So true. See you guys. This is why I wanted a Kelly in my office with Wendy. <laughs> But you're on to bigger, better things. I don't mean that in a negative way. No, but you we're, are, all, we're you all are, saving and changing the world just in different ways. <laughs> right, right. Well, you're living your sole purpose at this moment, right? I, sure. Everything yeah. can evolve. And I think so much of it is being aware of what our heart is actually saying to us, right? And what, what we're supposed to do, being tapped into our gut instinct. That's yeah. one thing you do as soon as you're like, oh, that's kind of awesome. You do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Life is just too short, you guys. Like I said right away in the beginning, it's just, you, you got to just live your best life. Do what you need to do to get there. It might be scary, but you just got to go for it because it, it'll be worth it. I promise you, it'll be worth it. Yeah. You're amazing, friend. Oh, I love you. You're amazing, too. I love you, too. Keep on blazing your own path so some other people have a place to follow thank you welcome you too girlfriend i will we're both accountable or accountability partners to each other how about that yes we are indeed <laughs> yeah okay love you till next time love you thank you so much for listening and being willing to go all in ditch the excuses and the comfort zones and make a decision that nothing can stop you you can find the show notes below and I'd love for you to share, subscribe, and rate this podcast, but only if you love it.